So having lived in a house for several years now, many years with my wife and two daughters, um, I got to kind of watch to see how mothers and daughters can relate to one another. And I got to see how those relationships can change over time. And I remember when my daughters were really small, what I noticed was a lot of love and a lot of fun. Blowing bubbles, making cookies, all that good stuff. And then, guess what? Adolescence comes. And it changes. And I noticed different things. I noticed shopping, and I noticed emotions, and I noticed conflict, and I even noticed some tears sometimes. But still, much, much love. And now that my daughters are old, older and they're out of the house and they're making their own way in the world now, I've seen the relationship change again into a, a beautiful friendship. And you know, psychiatrists say that the mother-daughter bond, for the most part, not for everybody, but for the most part, is very, very strong. And some say it's the most powerful bond in the world. It is so powerful that it affects health, it affects self-esteem, it even affects other relationships. And I bring this up today because I think it kind of helps to explain at least part of the reason why this woman in our story went to Jesus. Because like Father said at the start of Mass, she was not a Jew. She was not of the house of Israel. She was a Canaanite, a Gentile, somebody the Jews fought against. So she didn't even follow Jesus, but she came to him, and something brought her to him. But she really had no claim on his healing, right? And he would make that clear to her later on. Because of who Jesus was and where he came from and who this woman was and where she came from, there seemed like there was a big divide between them. And I can imagine at that time, if, when, if, when she showed up, that there were people that said, you know what, she doesn't belong here. She has no business being here. But she came anyway because something drew her there. And I can imagine that because of where she lived that she probably heard people talking about this Jesus guy. He's out there and he's healing people. And as she, he, she heard those stories more and more and more, it probably built up a hope inside of her that, hey, wait a minute, this Jesus can heal my daughter. So I think the mother-daughter bond, that strong love she had for her daughter, and knowing that Jesus could heal her, that's what brought her to him. And I think we can learn a lot about our relationship with Jesus and our relationships with one another if we look at this woman's story, the rest of it, and all the things that didn't happen in it. Not at the things that did happen, but what didn't happen. So one thing that didn't happen is Jesus didn't send her away. After she came to him, even though she was very different, he didn't tell her, I have nothing to do with you, go, leave. No, he didn't do that. He received her where she was. So that's good news for us because that shows us that no matter who we think we are, we can always go to Jesus. We can go just like we are to Jesus. We don't have to worry about that we're not the right person, or we don't live in the right spot, I don't go to the right church, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy. We don't need to worry about that. We can always go to Jesus, and we can trust he will never send us away either. We can trust that our lives are very important to him, and we can trust that he will always meet our suffering with his mercy. And I bet if Jesus does that with us, that we're probably supposed to do that with one another, right? To never push people away or isolate them or exclude them because of who we think they are, but always to welcome, always to receive them. 
to know that everybody's life matters, and to always meet suffering with mercy. So another thing that didn't happen, this woman, she didn't stop her pleading. You know, the disciples, she was loud and annoying, so loud and annoying that the disciples that were there with Jesus wanted him to send her away. Send her away. She's yelling after us. Send her away. But she didn't listen to them. She didn't stop. She just focused on him, fell at his feet, and kept pleading to him. So there's a lot of things in our lives, I think, that distract us from Jesus and separate us from one another. And some of that stuff comes just from ourselves, right? It's our doubt and our anger and our pride and our fear will cause us to isolate and separate. But there are voices out there too, just like in the story. And they are loud voices in the media. All you have to do is look at Facebook. And some of the voices come from our coworkers, and some of the voices even from our friends and family members. What I think this woman shows us is we need to ignore those voices and look past the things that separate us and divide us and keep us from Jesus and just focus on the things that bring us closer together and closer to him. So another thing that didn't happen is this woman didn't get the answer she expected. Because what was Jesus' first answer to her? It was nothing. He didn't say anything. And then his second answer was, well, you know, it's really not fair to take from the children and give it to the dogs. And I can bet that's not what she expected to hear. So what does that mean for us? It means that those times when we pray for something, and it seems like we pray for it over and over and over again, and we don't get what we want, we don't get it when we want it, sometimes we wonder, if, if God, are you even listening? That shouldn't be a surprise to us. Maybe God has something better in store for us. Maybe the answer was different and we didn't see it. And that plays into our relationships with one another too. We shouldn't be surprised if we are with people and for some reason they say something that we didn't expect or they don't act the way we want them to. We don't, they don't act the way they, we want when, when we want. Because our journeys are all different. Our experiences are all different. We think differently. So because somebody is different shouldn't surprise us. So another thing that didn't happen is this woman didn't leave. motivated out of that mother-daughter bond and the, and the love for her daughter and knowing that this Jesus is probably my last hope of ever relieving our suffering, she didn't leave. Even when he implied that she wasn't worthy of his healing, she didn't leave. And you know what else? She didn't get offended. She stayed determined. She kept the conversation open. She stayed humble. She didn't leave. So even though Jesus and this woman were very different, even though there were people that were trying to keep her away from him, keep them apart, even though she didn't get the answers she expected to get, she stayed with him. Out of that love, that mother-daughter bond, that love for her daughter, and the knowledge that this Jesus, he is able and he can heal her. So she stayed with him. That was her great faith. I bet no matter how long it took, she would have stayed with him. And that's the faith that we are called to, that same faith. A faith that is motivated by love, 
a faith where we acknowledge one another's differences, a faith where we don't get offended, where we stay humble, where we stay determined, where we keep conversations open, a faith where we stay with one another, a faith where we know this Jesus, he is able and he can do whatever I ask, but a faith to know, a faith to stay with him, even when he doesn't answer when and how I expect. So wouldn't it be cool if we could see that faith? Well, I can tell you that faith happens right here at Holy Redeemer. I can see that faith when I talk to a mother who comes to me in tears, tears of joy, tears of relief, that finally... Finally, her daughter has been freed from her demon of addiction. It's been many years of praying, many years of pleading, but I stayed with Jesus, and she is free. So it really does happen. That's the faith we are all called to. And I was reading an article in a magazine, and this priest said, When we stay with Jesus and persevere in prayer, even for an impossible goal, we receive surprising grace. That's the faith we are called to. Stay with Jesus. They say sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. And right now, right now, I'm losing bad. I stood on this stage night after night, reminding the broken it'll be alright. But right now, Right now, I just can't. It's easy to sing, and there's nothing to bring me down. But what will I say when I'm held to the flame like I am right now? I know you're joyful, and I know you can. Save through the fire with your mighty end, but even if you don't, my hope is in your love. They say it only takes a little faith to move the mountain. Will good thing a little faith?
it is worth.